Sun is in Pisces, Mercury, Jupiter, and Neptune are all hanging out together. We've got Mars and Venus still hanging out with Saturn. Plus, we've got this new spring season. Stay tuned because in this video, we are going to go through our energy forecast for the week, March 21st through March 27th. Hey, my friend, Daddy C. Mooney's here, your spiritual designer, helping you find clarity on your spiritual path. Today, we are going to talk about where our moon is hanging out all week and how that is going to affect us. We're also going to talk about our sun in Pisces because our sun moved into Pisces just a few days ago, as well as our other planets that are kind of doing some things and hanging out. We're going to talk about our oil of the week to help us get through this week and all the beauty that it has. All right, my friend, let me go ahead and share my screen so that you can see our chart for this week. And as always, remember, I'm showing you this chart. If you don't understand any of it, that is absolutely okay. Now, if you do want to learn more, I do have some upcoming classes in um, March and April, if this, if you're watching this in 2022, um, and I probably still have some if, in the future. I'm going to we'll forecast that out into the future. Um, I will be having classes around how to understand astrology, astrology 101, the basics, understand the zodiac signs understand the moon movements, the planet movements, and all the other good stuff that astrology has. So if you're into that, check down in that description box, because I'm sure there's a link in there for you to take you to register for an upcoming class. All right, so let's get started. You ready to get started, my friend? Because I am feeling this current current <laughs> uh, air energy. I swear I've tried to sit down and do this video for about an hour now, <laughs> but air energy, which is where our moon is right now. Um, this is actually, let me take it back to, let's take it back to the beginning. All right. We go back to the 21st here. We're looking at our transit for March 21st, 2022, 9 a.m. M central time. And this is in uh, sidereal. So this is sidereal astrology. Um, a lot of people ask me about why I choose sidereal astrology over tropical astrology. I'm definitely going to do a video about that this month. So look out for that. Um, but sidereal astrology shows us where the planets are actually in the sky right this minute. If we were to look up in the sky, you can use apps like sky maps or Google maps. Um, Google Earth Maps, <laughs> and you can see what is in our sky, and you'll see that our sun actually just moved into Pisces, and that our moon has been in Libra since yesterday. So when we are in air signs, the energy can be, um, for us Earth signs, <laughs> it can be a little chaotic, but let's talk a little bit about Libra, because we're going to be in Libra through Monday, and then we're going to move into our next zodiac sign. So Libra is an air sign, and it's a sign of balance and harmony. It's such a beautiful sign. Um, it wants to seek that balance, that partnership, that equality, and whether that is within ourselves or with others. So I want you to think about that when you're thinking about this energy throughout this day is how, or anytime the moon is transiting through Libra for that matter, is how can I have more balance within my life, within myself, within, with others, with my relationships. We can also look at relationships during this time as well. What's going on in our relationships? You might even feel more like wanting to be in a relationship if you're single or wanting to connect more with your partner if you are in a relationship. But this is really about the partnership or the balancing or the harmony that we have within our lives and our emotional well-being, right? Because our moon is our intuitive, innate, emotional energy. And so um, I don't know about you, but <laughs> that energy tends to fuel me, right? If I'm in a good mood or a bad mood, it's definitely probably because of how I'm thinking and feeling right inside. So this is why we follow the moon. So let's look at what can you do during these 
this air sign or during this current Libra energy? Well, most of the air signs, because it is a mental sign, your thinking, your thoughts are kind of like really, really on fire. And so this is a really good time to do research, right? If you're looking up stuff and doing some research, this is all also a really good time for brainstorming, for sitting down if there's a project or there's something that you want to do, or there's maybe even a challenge that you're having and you're finding that you're, you're, you keep getting this one, you know, viewpoint on it or this one perspective. And you're like, how else can I do this? Right. Such a great question to ask during Libra or any air sign for that matter is to open that up so that you can really look at other possibilities and other ideas, because, you know, sometimes we can get very stuck. <laughs> now, the other really good thing about this time is it allows us to, um, to have ideas maybe that we wouldn't have thought of before because Libra can see both sides, which is a really beautiful uh, um, aspect of, Li of Libra is that you can see different perspectives. So allow yourself to open up and see those different perspectives. Now, the other thing I want to talk about really quick, which I have been in past videos, so I'm excited to bring this in this week, is if you are a predominantly fire sign, okay, so if your sun, moon, or rising is in a fire sign, or if in your chart as a whole, you've got a lot of fire energy, I'm going to tell you that this energy can be burnout for you because fire tends to want to go and do things and act on things that with all the thoughts and ideas that are coming, you just want to go do them. So, which is great, but I'm also going to caution you because you could burn out because you're trying to do all the things and not really focusing that energy in too much. Okay. So I just want you to be cautious of that. Now for my water energy, so that's a sun moon rising in a water sign, or if you're predominantly water in your chart, this can have you with those stories. Anybody else have stories about their emotions or their thoughts or the situations that are going on around them? Oh, he said this and she did that and I'm feeling this. And we make up all these crazy stories about what that text message meant or what that email meant or what that emoji went, right? We look at these simple little things and we can make up some crazy stories about them. So I want you to be very, very cautious water signs. Watch out for those stories that you're that you're thinking and feeling about uh, what is going on around you. Now, my air energy, this is your energy. You're feeling it. This is your vibe, especially if you are a sun, moon, rising Libra. Um, but also if you have predominantly air in your chart, this is your energy. So enjoy this day of just like amplified energy for you. Now, my earth signs, take a deep breath. <laughs> this too shall pass. It's just a day. Uh, this can feel very chaotic for an earth energy. Again, whether that's your sun, moon, rising sign, or predominantly earth on your chart, this can be very chaotic. It's a multitasking energy. And sometimes with earth signs, if we don't have a lot of other prominent air in our chart, it can be a little a little chaotic. <laughs> it can be very um, like this to that, to this, to that, to this. And so I'm somebody that definitely I'm an earth sun and I have a lot of earth energy. I'm an earth sun, earth rising. So I have a lot of earth energy in my chart just as a whole as well. And so air moons tend to be very, very chaotic for me. As I said, I tried to sit down and record this three times, but I got distracted by this email and I got distracted by this social media thing. And then it was like, oh, I got to do this today. And I'm going to do this today. And oh, I wanted to go outside and do this. And so there's all these things that were happening for me that I was just going around doing that. It was hard for me to settle down. So I want you to keep that in mind, my fellow earths. <laughs> this is, this can be a little bit of a chaotic energy, but this too shall pass. All right. So on Tuesday, Let's go ahead and move our chart a day here. So Tuesday, you'll see that our moon has moved into our zodiac sign of Scorpio, as well as Wednesday, she'll be hanging out there as well. Okay, so our 
Scorpio energy, who very, very different than our Libra energy. First off, Scorpio is a water sign. So water signs, especially Scorpio is a transformative sign. It's about transformation. It's the rising Phoenix. It is death to rebirth. So this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energy, especially right now with our sun in Pisces, because this energy allows you to get to the depths, allows you to go deep, allows you to get into that healing work, to get into the root of what it actually is. Not that surface level stuff that, you know, like, oh, this is what it is. It's that deeper layer. It's, it's not that, oh, because my dad said this when I was nine years old, it's like, because I made a decision about who I am based on something that happened when I was nine years old, right? There's a deeper layer in when we're looking at Scorpio. So this is a really good energy for doing some healing work, <laughs> for breaking through some of those barriers that you have been maybe, you know, putting on yourself or have been put on you from society, right? The paradigms, the, the societal paradigm, the generational paradigms, the ancestral paradigms that we have had throughout our entire lives, right? And so these are this is a really good time for that deeper work. So reach out to your healers, reach out to your, your people that help you go through this trans transformations, reach out to me, I can help you go through these deeper layers, right? Um, this is also a really good time for um, creative projects, for create creativity as far as um, displaying that creative work or that creative aspect of you. And because it is in Scorpio, my friend Karen Sachs, she um, has these beautiful workshops called Paint Your Essence. And this is what it reminds me of. It's bringing in that transformative work through art, through creation. Now I'm not telling you have to go out and paint something, right? I'm definitely not a painter and I love Karen's workshops and I'm, I definitely get some breakthroughs through those classes just in the act of me trying to put myself out there as far as my creativity with paint, right? But there's other ways, right? That you can use this energy to have that creative outlet and seeing what's coming up, right? As things are rising and rising and rising and they're coming into our consciousness, this is the time for us to say, okay, I see you, I hear you, I feel you. Let me get this deeper understanding so that I can move through this and be a better version of myself for it. This is again, that rising of the Phoenix. So my fire signs, this is the fuel. This is the fuel that you need to go through it, right? To, 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 to go through it in a healthy way. Cause sometimes we can have that energy of like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> and they're not really done. You've just kind of put it on the back burner. You've kind of not really dealt with it. So we want to make sure that we're going through that. And so fire signs, this is really good energy to do that. My water signs, this is deep waters. <laughs> this can be a little bit overwhelming. So when I, this is what deep waters, if you've ever been in deep waters and whether that is, you know, out in the ocean or whether that is in a pool, um, I was like 12 or 13 years old. And at the time we lived in a house where we had a pool, which I was super excited about because as a cancer moon, I love water and going into the pool was like a ritual for me. And, you know, I was the only, only kid at home at the time. My brothers are six and seven years older than me. So, you know, one was married and in the Navy and gone. And I think he was living in Virginia at the time. So he was way, way far from the family. My other brother had moved out and was on his own. And so it was just me. And so oftentimes I would be the one by myself in the backyard swimming and being in the pool. And it just felt so refreshing and energizing for me which I didn't know back then was definitely something that I had needed for my own personal self-care. And so I remember I'm in the water and I would hold my nose, right? And I drop myself all the way down to the bottom of the pool, the, the, 
very, very bottom of the pool. And I think at the, I think it was like nine or 10 feet deep. And I was just all the way down there. And I would just sit there and I close my eyes and I would just be in the space of the water. And I would listen to the stillness, to the quiet. And it was just so refreshing. And then I push myself up and I break through the water and it was just like, whoosh, <laughs> coming out through the top. It just would feel so good. And then I do it again. And I would do this for like hours, just in the water, just dropping down and sitting at the bottom. And I'd stay there as long as I possibly could because I just wanted to stay there. But then we'd have friends that would come over or family that would come over for barbecues. And I would try to do that when I was, you know, when everybody was there and everybody's, there's music, there's, they're laughing, they're talking, they're you know, sharing memories that my cousins are in the pool and they're jumping around and, you know, they're playing all types of games. And I would try to do that when things would get chaotic and it wouldn't work. I would go down to the bottom but I'd get scared because I'd hear the splashing and I'd hear the, the loud noises and it, it wouldn't still me. And so for my water signs, this Scorpio energy can definitely feel like that. It can feel like there's some, there's chaos happening and you can't quite quiet it. So I want you to be aware of that because this can be very, very deep. And I want you to know this ahead of time. This brings me to our oil of the week, which is patchouli. Patchouli is a beautiful oil for helping us get into our body because sometimes whether it's our mind, whether it's our emotions, we're drifting off into these other places and we need to get strong within our body. We need to bring ourselves back to, to homeostasis, to home, to us. And so that's what this beautiful energy of patchouli can do. So what you can do, um, you can put it in your diffuser. You can, my favorite way is to drop it in my hands here, rub them together. <sighs> Take a nice deep, nice deep inhale, or even just rub it through my aura right? Really stabilizing and grounding me. All right. So let's get on to our air sign. So our air sign in this Scorpio energy could be very much dwelling or overanalyzing. You could be getting caught up in the, in the dwelling of what it is and what you're thinking and what's going on. And, and, and it just, it just keeps going. It keeps going and you're, you're overthinking it. So I want you to keep that in mind too. Use the patchouli for this to really ground yourself in my earth signs. This can be some muddy waters. You know, if you think about water, and earth, right? When it rains outside, what happens? There's mud. There's a couple things that happen though, right? You know how when the, the rain passes, the sun comes out and everything just feels so fresh and clean. Beautiful, right? Beautiful time. It's like, it's like this new life, this new energy, but it also can be a little dirty, a little messy, right? Our shoes get all wet. There's dirt, there's mud, and we can bring that into the house. My Jake, the pug, he tends to do that, right? And it can feel a little icky. It can feel a little messy. So this is what this energy could be like. So I want you to want to bring this to your awareness, right? So that you can use this to your advantage. All right. So then Thursday and Friday, we move into our fire sign of Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarius is the energy of expansion, it's ruled by Jupiter, which just wants everything so big and bold and just out there. It's also very, very optimistic. It's just like bright sunshine. <laughs> it feels so good. Jupiter is really, really good energy. It's, um, it's honest, right? It's very strong, uh, very strong morals and very action oriented energy. This is very big movement energy. So if you're looking to make some big moves, this is some really good energy to do that big changes, big growth. And with us just moving into the spring season, oh my goodness, what a beautiful time, right? To take some new initiatives, to start some new things using this beautiful Sagittarius energy. Now you can use the previous days that we've talked about to kind of come up with what may be your intentions for this spring season. What is it that you want to create, manifest, achieve, be, do, have during the spring season? We can use those other elements to help us. And then on Thursday and Friday, start taking some really powerful action. This is how we work with the energy, right? This is where we follow the moon. We help 
ourselves work with the energy and not against it. Now, um, so how does Sagittarius affect our signs? Well, our fire signs are, remember, our, our sun, moon, rising, or predominant fire in your chart. This is your energy. Go at it, my friend. This is your energy. Now, water. This is a forward movement with your emotion. So where we could have been a little bit stuck in those deep waters in Scorpio, this is pushing us forward. This is pushing us out. This is bringing, being, having, having the ability to speak what we feel, to be able to get in tune with those feelings and get them out, move them. Where Scorpio, we're hanging out with them, but we can move them in Sagittarius. Um, air signs, oh, here is your dreams, your big dreams, your big visions, your big ideas. Tune into this energy. When you're in Sagittarius, oh my goodness, this is like reamplify that energy. Come up with those, find those, seek those, come within to expand those. This is a really, really beautiful time for that. So air dream big, my friends, dream big during this time, tune into those dreams that you have, those visions that you have, the, you know, future, future things that you will, you want to manifest in this life. Um, my earth signs, this will pull you out. This will pull you out, pull you out to do the thing that you're wanting to do. This is a very energizing energy for you to get you going, to get you moving. So use this. So by the time we get to Thursday and Friday, you might not have feel so much like doing some things, but that by the time we get to that weekend, Thursday, Friday, you're going to want to like go because by the time we get to Saturday, <laughs> let's move on over to our Saturday. Our Saturday, our sisters are Friday, move into our uh, Saturday, there we go, Saturday, Sunday. All right, we get into the end of the week here, and we are moving into our earth sign of Capricorn. Now, this is the sign of responsibility. <laughs> this is our very practical, very planner, very organizing uh, type energy, all about achieving about achieving the thing, doing the thing, the recognition. So this is like the to-do list. <laughs> Let's get things organized. Um, I think it's so funny that growing up, I, you know, on Saturday, Saturday mornings, my mom, it was like the thing in the house, right? It was like we, after we had breakfast and, and then it was like cleaning the house. It was like, everybody clean your rooms. You know, um, I was in charge of dusting. <laughs> so I was dusting all the little knickknacks because my mom had a million knickknacks all over the, the living room. And so it was like cleaning that my brothers would clean the bathrooms. It was like the house was just getting cleaned. It was that very responsible energy of like, let's clean or right? let's get things in order. That's definitely our Saturn energy, um, which is so funny because Saturn rules. It's the day of Saturday. It rules the day of Saturday, which if you find yourself cleaning and picking up on Saturday, hmm, makes sense, right? But it is the energy of getting things in order, getting things straight so that you can get, you know, do the things that you need to do, really organized energy. So my fire signs, this is um, helping you in the action that you're taking, helping you sustain, sustain that, helping you keep it going. Because sometimes with the fire is it will light, it'll get lit, but then it fades, right? You've ever had that where you like go and then you stop. This is the energy to help you keep going. All right. So then we have our water sign. This is very grounding in those emotions. So we've let them go, right? We let them go with Sagittarius. And now we're going to ground back in. This is a really, really good time uh, to connect to your intuition, connect to your creativity, like bring that energy in. Um, air signs. This is structuring you. This is structuring the thoughts, structuring the ideas where they're not so all over the place, but you can now make a plan. You can bring all the ideas together and make a really nice plan. Um, air, I mean, earth, <laughs> my earth signs, this is your energy. This is your energy. So, you know, this is your normal, normal, um, feeling good, powerful energy. Your, your normal, natural qualities will be emphasized here. All right. So a couple of things I do want to point out here is that by the time we get to the end of the week, you're going to see here that we have Pluto, the moon, Mars, Venus, and Saturn all in Capricorn. <laughs> There's a lot of concentrated energy in that structure, in that planning, in that organizing. So um, if you've been looking for, you know, if you're feeling all over the place and you're wanting to like kind of settle that in, that energy in, this is the weekend. This is the time they're going to be in there. 
um, all of them are they're going to be there for a little bit longer. The moon's just going to move out, but the moon is just really getting us in tune with that. So um, as I've said before, when the moon starts to cross all of these guys, it's like that um, Super Mario energy of powering up, right? And he goes from little Mario to big Mario. It's that power up energy. This is what it's going to be doing again over this, over this coming week. All right, so let's get into, whoops, let's get into um, a couple other things that are happening. We've got um, our sun in Pisces. You can see here, it is now at 11 degrees in Pisces, but when we go back to the beginning of the week on our 21st here, our sun is at five degrees, right? We can go back even further and see when we actually moved in, which is right here. We moved into Pisces on uh, the 16th of March. So when we're looking at Pisces season in general, okay, I'm just going to say in general. Now, if you're looking for more specifics about how this Pisces season is going to affect you, I definitely would recommend getting a uh, transit chart reading with me if I can really zone in on what the season is going to be for you. Now, the sun in Pisces, sun is a water sign, and it is the sign of intuition. <laughs> it is the sign of the mystical, of the occult, of the subconscious, the things that are hidden. Okay. And so this is very imaginative. This is very dreamy. This is very empathetic energy. So when I was talking about that water sign Scorpio earlier, and I was talking about the different elements, these all kind of like are going to hit you the same. Anytime we are in a water sun, it's going to feel exactly the same. It can be a little muddy for some of us. It can be a little overwhelming, right? It can be too much. The beautiful sign of Pisces though, this is, this is the, the more higher elevated, um, water energy where we went through the transformation in Scorpio and in Pisces, we can be in that higher state, in that higher vibration and connect to source, connect to spirit, connect to divine God, whatever it is that you believe, but being able to tune in, connect to that energy. So the one beautiful thing is that we're able to really easily connect consciously into that more, right? Especially when the sun is in Pisces. One of the other things that it can help us um, understand is our environment, because Pisces is very, very influenced by its environment because it is very empathic. It can sense everything that's going on around them, right? Is that because we're going to be more in tune with that is what I'm, is what I want you to know. And so because of that, we can, we can understand, right? People more and have a little bit more compassion, which I think our world needs a lot more of, right? Compassion with other people, but also it helps us be aware of the environments of the surroundings that are not good for us. And I don't just necessarily mean physical environment. I mean, mental, spiritual, emotional environment, right? What is going on within our minds? What is going on within our spaces? What is going on within our emotions, right? Tune in. So although we are influenced by our environment this is also a really good time for us to be like, what environments are not serving us and what environments are? What environments do you need to put yourself in, right? This morning, I had a beautiful playlist that I've been collecting and creating of songs that really help me be in my energy, in, in where I'm going and what I'm wanting and right. And so because of the air energy and my thoughts were kind of feeling a little chaotic, I just put that on and just tuned right in and it was perfect, right? It was just what I needed. So there's a lot more compassion, a lot more creativity. Pisces is super creativity, uh, super creative and Pisces is selfless. Now my friend Desiree Delune. She has been talking about selfless all this month and she did a really beautiful reframe. And I think I want to share it because I think it was super helpful for me. And I think it'd be helpful for you as well is selfless. If we look at that selfless is less of self. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be any, I don't want to be less than myself. I don't want to be less than I, I want to be me. I want to be more of me, if anything, right? 
So reframing that to self more, how can I be self more instead of self less? Because it's okay to give and it's okay to honor and it's okay to have compassion for others, but it's also important for us to make sure that we are being compassionate to ourselves, that we are being empathetic to ourselves, that we are taking care of ourselves. And so I want you to be mindful of this energy that there could be this, this wanting to be selfless, but I want you to, I want to invite you to be self more because it starts with us, right? The one thing that I do also want you to be cautious of is the lower vibration of Pisces can be very fearful. It can have the escapism attitude. It can have the victim mentality, the negative mentality, the rose colored glasses mentality at that too, where you're, you're not quite seeing everything clearly. You're, you're going down and, and, and it's really interesting because Pisces can get, it can feel all the things around them, right? And so it can pick up on all the energies. And sometimes if the energies are so overwhelming of one particular energy, right? Fear, negativity, this can overcome us. So I want you to also be mindful of this. Are you being victim? Are you playing that role? Or are you being aware of it and letting it go? Tune into that higher vibration, my friend. Tune into spirit. Tune into the divine. Tune into the universe, God. Tune in and receive. Allow. Connect. Now, how can we use this energy? The sun in Pisces is beautiful energy to connect to spirit to connect to your spiritual practices. If you have fallen off the wagon, if you were like, have, you know, had your rituals of, of, of meditation, of maybe you were pulling a, a, a Oracle card or tarot card, maybe you were lighting a candle, maybe you were, you had some crystals, maybe you're working with some things and you've kind of fallen off the wagon. <laughs> this is a beautiful time to connect back to those. Spring is here. This, this rejuvenation, right? This, this refresh, use this, use this to connect back to those practices, connect back. The other thing is healing, healing any past wounds, traumas, paradigms, healing. This is a really beautiful time. My healers rise up my friends, because it's time for us to help. <laughs> it's time for us to be there for those that need us, right? Help us right? Help ourselves. We help ourselves so that we can help others, right? We help ourselves first so that we can help others. We are not wounded healers, right? We help ourselves first so that we can help others. So we can use this energy to help, help others heal, to move past this, right? We don't need to be in this anymore. Um, release outdated environments, as I was saying earlier, to release those that are not serving you, calling in the new ones that are going to best serve you and support you and, and figuring out what that is, right? What are environments that are going to serve me? I might not know right now, but allowing ourselves to be open to that. Um, dreams and dream work, really good time to pay attention to your dreams, pay attention to what your, um, what, what's going on in your dreams and reviewing and setting those boundaries, reviewing what boundaries you currently have. Do they need some fixing? Are there some boundaries that you've had up for so long that are blocking you from actually receiving and being open? Are there boundaries that now need to be set because maybe you're in a new, a new way of being and there's new boundaries that need to be set. Um, the final thing would be endings in tropical astrology, Aries, right? Which is the sign right after Pisces kicks off our spring season. Pisces is the end of the zodiacal zodiacal season. <laughs> so with Pisces, right? It's the endings. So what do you need to end? What needs to come to an end? What needs to close? What, what's, what needs the closure? What needs the pretty little bow on top, right? How do we need to seal this in? Definitely take time over the next week or so to really reflect on this winter season. It's something I'm doing with my community, Align to Amplify, is we're going to reflect on this past season so we can take those learnings and then really set some powerful intentions for our spring. All right, my friend, that is it for us this week. We have some beautiful, beautiful energy, as you can see, going on 
this week. Um, I'm going to highly recommend that you use some patchouli to ground yourself in um, lots going on. Um, and always, you know, if you need any extra support or you're curious um, about this more, curious about astrology, want to learn a little bit about it um, from a very basic point of view, right? I'm teaching uh, classes this month and next month all about the basics of astrology. So come learn with me. I have classes in person online. Check the description box down below so that you can really start to come back and remember who you are. As always, my friend, remember, close your eyes and take a deep breath. And find 